Hello my friends, this is Eric Parker with One Number Tableau Experts and in this week's Tableau video, what I wanna do is cover with you how, uh, why did Tableau create the relationships feature as an alternative to joints, okay? So we've actually done a really full deep dive analysis on this before in the description below. Uh, you can check out a video, uh, like an hour long webinar that we did comparing joints and relationships and just all the functionality in today's video, I just wanna cover one specific use case with you and look at the difference between um, structuring and combining multiple tables with a join versus if we do it with a relationship, okay? So first of all, they give you a little bit of a background on the data that we're gonna be working with. Um, it's data that I found on data.gov and it is from New York City and it's motor vehicle collisions. Um, so what you would have is, there's actually two different tables. I have a crash table and I have a vehicles table, okay? So a crash would just have one row of data per uh, collision that occurred. And I think it's, you know, there's like a dollar amount if it's greater than a thousand dollars or something, it has to be listed. So I don't probably need to go too crazy on this, um, but basically it would tell you where it happened and some information about if people were injured, killed, if they were pedestrians, motorists, you know, some of that kind of stuff, okay? And then there's actually a different table, which we'll get to eventually. Um, and this is called uh, NYC Motor Vehicle Collisions uh, Vehicles. So that table is a little bit bigger. It's gonna have one row of data per vehicle per collision, right? So a crash may have, there might, it's a one crash, but there might be two cars, there might be 10 cars, like it's gonna vary, okay? So, we're gonna kind of go to a high level for a moment because I wanna talk a little bit about data theory. If you work with data that comes from a database, you might be familiar with the terms fact tables and dimension tables. Even if not, I bet you're familiar with them even if you don't know the terms, okay? So a fact table is a table of data that is primarily comprised of numeric information that you want to analyze, okay? So think about that as things like dollars or hours or, you know, head count, right? In our case with the New York City vehicle collisions, it's going to be something like number of people injured. Um, you could say something like number of dollars and damages, number of vehicles involved. Those are facts or what Tableau desktop calls measures, okay? Uh, so a dimension table what it primarily contains is descriptive information. So for example, it might take something like an, in this case, an item ID, and then turn that into, oh, item 1000 is asparagus, and that costs $13 at our restaurant, right? That's more of a dimension table. In the real world, it's not always split out this black and white or blue and green, pun intended. Uh, it is more so a lot of times kind of gray, right? There's something in the middle where there's, eh, it's got some dimensional stuff, some fact stuff, okay? So in our case, with the New York City uh, vehicle collision data, it's basically two fact tables, right? One fact table has numeric information about a crash, and then one fact table has numeric information about the vehicles. And yeah, there's a little descriptive information, um, uh, you know, wh what state was the vehicle registered to, uh, but it's mostly facts. Okay, so let's look at what happens if you join these tables. Okay. Initially, right now, I, I'm only connected to the collisions table or the crashes table. Okay. But even here, you can see, you know, something like, hey, if we were to look at, uh, let's say, like a collision, and then the number of persons injured, like what collision had the most injuries? Okay. So we do that. I'll do a bar chart. I'm going to sort this. Okay. So there was a collision, uh, whatever that was, the one ending in 119. Uh, it had 18 people injured. Okay, so maybe we wanna know some information, like how many vehicles were involved in that crash, okay? We don't have that information from just this table alone, so we need the vehicles table, okay? Try and sear this into your mind. Heck, maybe even just to, uh, to have this to look back on, I'm just gonna snipping tool this uh, so we can come back to these numbers when we want to. So we go back to our data source, and I'm gonna set up a cross database join. So let me pop back over to my folder, which contains my vehicles table. And side note here, uh, so Tableau says there's about 110,000 rows in the crashes table alone. So let's bring vehicles into the fray. I'm gonna drag and drop that extract here. This one is gonna be a little bit different. I uh, don't know that viewing the data will tell us the number of rows. In fact, I think it will not. Uh, but I guess, just out of curiosity, 
I know, it's tableau, you're gonna get mad at me, I know. But if I just put the vehicles um, table in, you're gonna see it's a lot bigger, right? The first one was like 110,000 rows, this one is like 210,000 rows. Okay, so we're gonna set up a join, which means that that first extract, the crashes extract, which is connected, I'm gonna hit the drop down and say open. So that brings me into what Tableau calls the physical layer. And here in the physical layer, I'm gonna swap over to my vehicles input. And now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to join uh, these two tables. Okay, hopefully my audio didn't just cut out there. My headphones just did something funky. Uh, anywho, what we will do is we do need to join on collision ID, and I think that's it. I don't think there's any other IDs that we can connect on necessarily. Yep, I think that's going to be it. So just to be safe, I'm going to swap this to an outer join. I don't want to lose any crashes if there, I don't know how there wouldn't be a vehicle, but if there wasn't for some reason. And for our own sanity, um, I'm going to see if it'll let me rename these. It won't. Okay. Cool, I guess we're just stuck with those names. So we'll hit this, and then we're gonna go ahead and pop over to the joins. And notice that something really weird happened, right? Previously, the collision ID with the highest number was 18. And now we have something that's showing us all the way up to 160. So what's going on there? Uh, my guess is that there is a massive amount of duplication going on, okay? Because conceptually, you have a crashes table, right? And this is something like 110,000 rows of data. And now we have a vehicles table, and that's 210,000 rows of data. So if every row found a match, what would happen is essentially the crashes table would expand and end up becoming the same size as the vehicles table, okay? I didn't really put this in a very good spot, but that's okay. So what that would mean is that any fact, any measure that was tied to the crashes table, like number of persons injured, it might show up over and over again now. So that one table that said 18 before, if there was three different, um, how should I say this? So there are three different vehicles involved in that crash, that 18 is now showing up on three different rows of data. So there are quick ways of solving this, right? I could say, oh, don't show me the sum of the number of people injured, show me the maximum, right? And that should help resolve this, right? Like this one gets knocked down to 18, um, but only so long as collision ID is in the worksheet. If I took collision ID out and maybe I wanted to see, oh, how many people were injured at a specific borough or a specific street, um, that ability is gonna get messed up, right? It's gonna say, well, Staten Island had 18. Well, we know more than 18 people probably got injured on Staten Island. That's a big place and a whole year's worth of collisions. Uh, however, that's just showing us the maximum row that had Staten Island as the borough said 18 people got injured. Okay. So if you really are set on using joins when you're joining together two fact tables, you still have options, right? Uh, for example, I could create a calculated field and I could fix this measure. So what I mean by that is I'm gonna say number of persons injured uh, fixed. The way this would work is I would say, you know, fixed on the collision ID, give me the, you know, only count the number of people's injured once. It's number of persons injured. There you are. Bang, bang, boom, there we go. So this is going to make sure that when we pull this field out onto the worksheet, it's not gonna, when it, you know, if we had some, for example, it's not gonna duplicate it because fixed is defining our level of aggregation as collision ID. So, you know, don't summarize it multiple times is kind of roughly what I'm saying with that, okay? So now if we pull this out of here, if I say number of persons injured fixed and we throw this on the column shelf, okay, first of all, I'm still seeing our, you know, the collision ID with the most people injured was 18. We think that's right from what we saw before we got the join kicked off, okay? And now if I wanted to switch the, uh, you know, level of detail in the view from collision ID to borough, for example, Staten Island isn't showing as 18 anymore. It's showing as 1,095. So this is in effect making sure that our numbers aren't duplicating, even though in reality they did duplicate because of the join. So that's an option. I, I use that pretty often. Here's the drawback to that. 
in theory, any measure that could get duplicated from the join, I would need to write a fixed version of a calculation to accommodate that, right? Which that's a lot of fixed expressions. And, and this is only just, you know, one small, simple table. This isn't even like, you know, some massive table. Um, so, okay, what's an alternative? A relationship would be our alternative. Okay, so in a relationship, Tableau is not necessarily duplicating uh, rows of data, it's just relating on the worksheet at the level that you asked it to. So I'm gonna reconnect my crashes data. I'm gonna reconnect my vehicles data. And this time, instead of going into the physical layer, what I'm gonna do is keep this at the logical layer uh, to create a relationship. I get this little noodle going, okay? So now here, I say collision ID equals collision ID. Um, that's fine. And now popping over to my relationships table, uh, let's say I want to do that same thing I was doing before. So I want to say like, okay, here's, you know, collision ID, add all members. And I want to see number of people's injured. You know, did this duplicate as a result of, of what we just set up there? Uh, do, do, show our labels. Doesn't seem to have, right? There's just 18 people uh, injured in this collision, not a hundred, whatever it ended up being when it duplicated with the join. And now I could just easily say like, okay, what if I want to see the number of vehicles that were involved? So I'll do a kind of a right click and drag here and put vehicle ID on the column shelf. And, you know, so then I could see, okay, there was 18 people injured. However, it just happened to be a two car accident, right? Whereas here's a 10 car accident with 16 people injured. So one of the initial questions I'd written down here is what is the correlation between number of people injured and number of vehicles involved in an accident? I mean, I assume generally if there's more vehicles, there'd be more people injured, uh, but you know, only one way to find out about that. So let's do, I'm gonna do a little rearranging here to turn this into a scatter plot, put number of persons on rows. And let me just flip collision ID down to, to detail. This is a pretty large data source. I, I cut it down even to just only 2021 data and it's still a pretty massive data source, which is crazy. So it is interesting to see that, you know, probably I'm guessing the more vehicles that probably there could be more people injured, but actually it, we're, I don't know how much, you know, we might just be seeing the outliers, but uh, you know, as the, the accidents that had the most people injured actually didn't always have the most vehicles involved, right? Um, I don't know if a trend line would help us here. I'm just sort of spitballing. So let's throw that out there. Yeah, there's only sort of a moderate increase in number of people injured as more vehicles are involved. So I think that's maybe just sort of a good confirmation that just because there's a lot of vehicles in an accident doesn't necessarily mean that a lot of people would be injured. Okay, so cool. That's sort of a, a kind of a high level rundown joins versus relationships, right? Could we do all this with a join? Sure, we'd have to do some fixed and we have to be really careful about not having data duplicate, but we could do it. Um, with a relationship though, we don't, have to, we don't have to sweat it as much, right? We just know the relationship, it's connecting the data at the collision ID level, but it's not creating a new physical table that duplicates rows of data. It's leaving the rows of data um, or summarizing them at the level that we ask for in the worksheet, okay? So there are a couple funky things about relationships. We cover some of that in the, the longer form video that I mentioned. Uh, one of those things to look out for is that, um, what am I trying to say here? Uh, <laughs> the, if you haven't pulled your measures onto a worksheet, like if there was a collision which didn't find a match in the other table, I have to look out for that. Um, let's see if I can just show you a quick example of this. So if I took vehicle ID from, not vehicle ID, uh, collision ID is what I need actually. So if I took collision ID from my main table, which is in this case crashes, I'll see there's like 110,000 collisions. And then if I put collision ID from vehicles on here, I'm guessing, yeah, the number actually dropped a little bit, right? It's actually down to 102,000. Uh, so what I would need to do if I want to make sure I'm still seeing all my rows is either add some measures. If you add measures, like if I added a uh, you know, number of people injured or number of vehicles, that would help to make sure that rows weren't not showing, or if I went to analysis, um, table layout, show empty rows, that would also make sure that all of the collision IDs showed up whether or not they found a match in the other table. So just something to look out for. So I hope this was helpful to sort of getting to see a specific example where relationships could be a really nice fit for what you're trying to accomplish. 
Um, if you want to check out this info button up here in the top corner of this video, we run Tableau classes all the time. Um, we have calculations classes, Tableau prep classes, and probably most related to this video, we have some fundamental and intermediate level um, Tableau desktop classes. So in those, we cover you know data preparation and, and joins, relationships, unions, blending, like all that good stuff. So we would love to have you join us for one of those. Um, thank you all so much for checking this out. We really hope that it's been helpful in you know, allowing you to better understand relationships and joins and you know when one might be a better fit uh, for your data. If you have questions, let us know. Uh, I'm going to try and link out these materials. It's going to be some big data sources, so I'm hoping Tableau Public lets me pull this off, but I'm planning on linking some of this out, so hopefully in the description below you can uh, check out some of this data for yourself. So thank you all again. Uh, we appreciate it, and we'll see you next week here at the One Number YouTube channel. Thanks.